Okay, so what we're going to do right now is we are going to uh, we're going to play around with some uh, some different things, and I'm going to just quickly reset my workspace so it looks like yours. Good, and we're going to do a little bit of painting in here, and you'll notice over here you've got the uh, ribbons layer that's turned off. Please turn it on. Make it visible. Good, and select the ribbons layer. Once you've selected the ribbons layer, you'll see that we have happy birthday up here. And I want you to pick the marquee tool, which is the letter M. If you hold it down, you click on it, hold down, you'll see there's other ways that you can pick marquee, but just pick the rectangular one and draw a rectangle in here about this size. doesn't matter uh, as long as it's basically uh, close. Now, we are going to draw blue in there and put the person's name. So what we're going to do is you're going to, you need a color. So you can pick the color by hitting I for the eyedropper or clicking again on this tool and go into this blue and click. Please notice that the color has changed down here and has also changed up here in this area. Great. So now hit the letter B for brush again. And if you hold down the control key and click or the right click in this area, brings up a menu for the brushes. This is called a contextual menu. And we're gonna start off with a size of, actually, well, this guy right here, the very first one is a soft round brush. And I make it about 30 pixels, you hit return and it closes. And when you paint, you'll notice that you are painting with blue. Well, that's good, but you know what? The brush is pretty small. So look for the right square bracket and click that a bunch of times and you'll see that the brush is getting bigger. The left square bracket makes it smaller. So go to a fairly big brush Brush back and forth. Good. Nice. Fill up that marquee, that, that selection. Awesome. Now you will notice also that, hey, you didn't paint outside of the selection. And that's awesome. So, you know, if you had this in kindergarten, you would have done a whole lot better maybe. I know I would have. And so that is a very useful tool. Okay. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add the text in there and go Command D, Control D to deselect, or you can go up here and up to select and say deselect. So now it's not selected, hit the letter T for the text tool. That's the horizontal text tool that's over here. Next, we need a size, go to about 30 points right there. And notice that the text default right now is blue. That's not really going to work for us, is it? Because if you if you if your text is blue on top of blue, you're not going to see it. So hit return in order to enter in this text at 30 points and hit the letter D. Now down here, when you hit the letter D, you will notice that it goes to the default setting for the colors. That is uh, black for the foreground, white for the background. All right. Now, if you click and drag down here and let go, now you've got your text. And I want you to type in any name that you can think of. Elaine is the default for... Uh, or the, the example that they have, but you know what, you can put Billy Bob or whatever it is that, uh, that you'd like in there. Now, I'm actually going to, uh, I'm going to highlight Elaine, you know, maybe I'm going to zoom in so you can see this a little bit better. If you want to zoom in, you hit the letter Z to zoom, you'll notice you're in the text tool. See that? You got to get yourself out of the text tool. Now you can do that by going over here and clicking on the the zoom tool, or you can click on the checkbox 
Again, if you are in the text tool and you hit return, it's just going to go down to the next line. Uh, you may have on your keyboard the enter key, which is way over on the right hand side, or if you hold down like the function key and hit enter, that'll work too. Okay, most people just hit the checkbox, quite honestly. I'll do that with the checkbox, hit Z for zoom, and I'm going to zoom on in. Hit the space bar, and I get the hand tool right away, let go of the space bar, and hit the letter T, you're back in the text tool. And you can click on the name. Double click on the name, and we're going to change the color. Click on this and see the eyedropper that we have here? You can click around, pick different colors. I always like to pick a color that is going to match the, uh, match the photograph or uh, whatever. So I use the eyedropper a lot. But if you want to, you can also use some of the swatches. So if you pick the swatch, uh, you can get in here. Actually, you probably have a, a different swatch at the moment, which I can't get, I can't show because the uh, because I'm currently in the text tool. I can't make a number of changes, so I will click OK and then check box and. And I'm going to say, show me the small thumbnail. That's probably what you have for right at the moment. So double click back on Elaine. And maybe I don't want neon. Maybe I'm going to go with this yellow. Okay. And then I'm going to say, you know what? I kind of want the letter E to be a different color. So you can highlight the letter E and pick maybe this gold right here. Okay. All right, so go Command or Control-0 in order to be able to see everything. And once you pull back, you kind of go, yeah, I don't really like that too much. So what we're going to do is I'm going to, while I'm in the text tool, I'm going to double click on Elaine, and I'm going to change the color. And the color at the moment, whoops, is, I'm going to click into, notice it had the question mark there. I'm going to click on this font at the moment. So that way, it's going to be basically the same. And you, of course, can change any one of the fonts that you've got. So... Um, uh, the, uh, so, boy, I think that they used Minstrel on, no, it was Minion. Minion, and they probably made it italics as well. So, again, you can change so many of these things. So, click from regular to italics there. Awesome. Okay. Hit the check mark. Now we're going to change the size of this a little bit. So there's two different ways you can change the size. You can do it while you're in the text tool. So if you double click on this and you hover over top of the letter T, uh, okay, or this guy right here, you'll notice that I click and drag back and forth. I can change the size that way. I'm going to hit the check mark. Or you can go over here to the Move tool. You need to have Auto Select and Show Transform Controls turned on. And then you can grab these guys and adjust it to whatever size you would like. Make it about this size right here. And drag it into the middle. Great. Hit the check mark. Awesome. Next, what we're going to do is we are going to uh, we're going to remove a part of this ribbon. See how up here it's removed? So we're going to remove this. So what I want you to do is first of all go into the ribbons layer. Click on the ribbons layer. Great. 
And then I want you to pick the polygonal lasso tool. If you hold this down on the lasso tool, it is the poly, the second one down, polygonal. And the shortcut is the letter L. But if you hit the letter L right away, you'll probably, your default is probably this lasso. So go shift L and it will take you through the three different ones as you're hitting the letter L. Holding on the shift key, I'm hitting the letter L. All right, so get this polygonal lasso one, and we are going to, I'm gonna zoom in on this so you see this a little bit better. And so now I'm going to click slightly outside. I'm gonna click once, come into about the middle, click again, See how it's a straight line right now? It's gonna make a polygon. Now, I can click here and I can close this if I want, or I, what I can actually do is just double click and it automatically draws a straight line to the end. There it is, good. Now I wanna remove this part, so I hit delete. See that? Nice. Now, why didn't it delete the flower? Well, the reason why I didn't delete the flower is because we are in the ribbons layer and so many mistakes in Photoshop are made because you're in the wrong layer. So I would say probably if you're finding that something's not working with Photoshop 80% of the time, it's because you're in the wrong layer. Let me show you. If I click on the rose layer and I hit delete, boom. See how part of the rose disappears? I'll undo that by going on to my history window, backing up. See how I can do that? I can actually back up a whole lot. And I can go forward, go to there. I'll put away the history window. And now I want to deselect this area. Go uh, Command D or Control D. You can also find it under Select and Deselect. There it is. Command zero so that we can see everything. Or control zero. Yeah, I like that. That's quite nice. All right, let's save this. Command S to save. And in actual fact, what I'd like you to do is I want you to save this into your Photoshop One folder. And I'm also going to get you to uh, I'm going to get you to submit this too, please, on to Google Classroom. All right. Thanks very much.